attack. He's been played through. He's onside. The goalkeeper's been lobbed. It's gone in. What a goal! I am Robbie Straczynski, and welcome to The Orbit. Unlike the first 11 episodes of our show, this one, episode number 12, is being broadcast live for the very first time on twitch.tv slash poker. Thanks so much, everyone, for tuning in, and we look forward to your comments and questions throughout the episode. Plus, you can even go ahead and take a moment right now to spread the word on Twitter that the action at our four-handed table is live. The World Series of Poker 2021 is on the horizon, and with just a couple more months to go until the doors open at the Rio Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas, our entire industry's excitement is climbing to record levels. We've gathered a great group of individuals for our panel today, each of whom has a special connection to the WSOP, and who I'm really looking forward to hearing from on our topics of discussion. Without any further ado, I'd like to introduce this episode's panelists. In seat one, joining us from Las Vegas, we have Maury Escandani. Elected to the Poker Hall of Fame in 2018, Maury is the president of Poker Go. The production company he founded is responsible for producing some of the best poker shows and broadcasts of the modern era, including High Stakes Poker, Poker After Dark, and of course, the World Series of Poker. Maury, welcome to the show. Thank you. Glad to be here. In C2, joining us from North Carolina, we've got Greg Raymer, best known for winning the 2004 World Series of Poker Man event for $5 million. Greg is also one of the most successful players in the history of the Heartland Poker Tour, a successful cash game player, a published poker strategy author, and an overall great ambassador for the game. Greg, welcome to the show. Thanks, Robbie. Glad to be here. Good to see you. In seat three, joining us from Minnesota, we have Isaac Hansen, formerly the manager of media relations and content for the World Series of Poker. Isaac now works for GG Poker, where he is the project to lead, overseeing many of the company's major online and now offline events, aka the live WSOP. Isaac, welcome to the orbit. Yeah, thanks for having me. So hello everybody, thank you very much for making the time to join me today. I'm really looking forward to today's live roundtable discussions. Let's jump right in with Maury in seat one. Maury, let's take a look at the WSOP announcement. What in your opinion are some of the highlights that you're looking forward to and that you think that players and fans will truly enjoy playing and coverage of and additionally, is there something perhaps that you would have liked to see included in the WSOP's plans that isn't there? I can't really think of anything that, that's not included in their plans. They usually, uh, you know, especially for this one, they, they have plenty of time to adjust and react to all that happened with the pandemic, with uh, not having the shows uh, the way, uh, you know, we are used to it last year. Uh, yeah, the only thing that's missing is a special event made for me, so I can play in, and uh, <laughs> we are not filming it. But other than that, yeah, uh, there, it's going to be intense filming. Uh, I'll tell you, uh, it's going. We, we are, this is going to be one series that we are going. We are, will have live streams of more events than uh, ever before. So uh, we are planning cool. to live live stream at least eighteen bracelet events. It could be as many as thirty or more. So we are. Uh, Minimum is 18, and then live stream the entire 15 days of uh, main events. So uh, that is that is uh, you know a, a given. And of course, uh, after that, there'll be um, many many episodes created from those live streams for broadcast. That and that, that you can expect to see uh, plenty of WSOP on 
on digital and the broadcast format uh, for the for at least ten months until it'll, it'll get us it'll get us well into the summer of the next next WSOP. Brilliant. So besides obviously the World Series of Poker main event itself, is there anything else on the schedule that you're particularly looking forward to filming or that you think fans are going to be like, wow, this is amazing? Well, the one thing that we've always done so well has been the mixed games, the the horse and the player championship and, uh, you know, all of uh, all of the games that are not exactly popular to the mainstream, but very dear to many of the poker players. So. Uh, they can expect to see uh, a few of that. Of course, no limit hold them still the focus of, of ours and, and the whole world. So, yeah, we'll, we'll be covering um, all of the uh, – I, I don't know if you know it or not. I'm, I'm, sh I'm sure you've seen the schedule. There's some uh, nosebleed uh, uh, no limit hold -ems. That's all going to be covered. And we have a $250,000 <laughs> buy-in event. So, uh, it, although main event is over in November 17, <clears throat> we are still streaming until the 22nd. So uh, our job is done when the last card is dealt. Yeah. So we're there from start to finish. You know, the main, you know, main event obviously is the focus from the 4th of November uh, that goes all, all the way to 17th. But uh, like I said, we'll be there for the rest of it. There'll be still some- well, but, but your job's not over until the editing is done. <laughs> uh, yeah, true, true. Yeah, the editing will be, uh, the heavy editing will be for the main event. That's where sure. you know, the heavy, so many of the bracelet events, uh, we are trying to capture everything we can. Well, you know, like uh, as of now, all of them will be on the main stage. So every single event that we are filming, bracelets or main, will be in the mothership, as we call it. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, m many exciting. I know people are people are can't wait to get to WSOP. I mean, this is one event, you know, like I'm sure you all feel that. As soon as it's over, you're thinking about what do I do next year? You know, it's, right. it's not that many events. It's not that many poker events like that. You know, it's over. You don't think about it until you hear the press release. Oh, yeah, this is coming. That is coming. But WSOP, as soon as it's over, people are thinking, OK, what do I do next year? You know, like, <laughs> like if, if you had a bad one, hopefully I'll have a good one next year and all that. And now it's been two years. So you can imagine, you know, everybody's just so uh, eager to jump into the play. So sure. yeah, we're looking forward to it. Plus, the cool thing is after the fall, we won't have a full year to wait because probably next summer it'll be yeah. back. We won't be able to wait the full year. Um, Greg, uh, you know, same question we'll pose it to you. Obviously, you represent the professional players' uh, standpoint here on the panel. What are your thoughts about what the WSOP has planned this fall? Oh, it's a good lineup. I mean, and it is nice to have the mixed games that Maury men mentioned. Um, you go to any other tournament series around the country and it's either all no limit hold'em or it's almost all no limit hold'em with a couple of other events you know maybe one or two plo events maybe a horse maybe um but here we get to play the really great games like one of my favorites is the no limit deuce to seven single draw yeah and i don't ever see that event anywhere else except at the World Series, sometimes in the past, some of the other poker rooms that are running a series at the same time as the World Series in the summer have offered a single draw event. But there might only be, you know, three, four, five single draw events all year long, if that. They and two of them are at the World Series, and then you can play some of it in the dealer's choice you know, some of the other games, but the only, the only downside to the schedule is they haven't substituted Raz with action Raz. <laughs> Maury so might have heard of action Raz. Yeah. <laughs> nah, I, are you, I, are I, you playing I, that game in your mixed games, Maury? I, I have not played action Raz yet, but when you mentioned that, I remember from way, way back, a game that we played, we called it a Raz shot. I don't know if that's the same thing. But uh, tell me how that goes, Action Raz. Action Raz is just like normal Raz, except to have a really strong hand, you have to have a face card amongst your seven. So if you and I get to showdown, Maury, and you have a wheel, and your other two cards are not face cards, and I have all face cards in my hand, I win. 
So the, the first at showdown, the first qualifier is who has a face card, who doesn't. If you don't have a face card, your hand can't win unless no one has a face card. So if you like make ace two, three, four, five on the sixth and seventh street, you're just praying for a face card so you qualify. So you're a kicker. You need a kicker, face card kicker. That's what you're saying. Yeah, What's your, hand? your face card seven, doesn't seven have to play. King, seven low and king kicker. Is that right? Exactly. <laughs> so if, if you have a seven low and a king kicker and I have a wheel and no face card, you win. Okay. Hmm. So, so even so though it, action it, isn't on the schedule, we know that. But it will be. be. Yeah, it will be. Perhaps it's going to take two, and and Greg will be uh, perhaps at the final table. I got to I got to get Maury leading the charge to add it to Dealer's Choice next summer, and then we can just decide that Action Raz is so much better than Raz; it'll take over. I can just so, hear like, our graphic. No, 10K saying, Raz. <laughs> I, I can just see our, our graphics. How, how do we how do we make this happen now again? What are the values? <laughs> yeah. All right. Mm. Isaac, we want to give you a chance here to answer the question as well. Uh, obviously, you got the standpoint of GG, a, a partner of the World Series of Poker. What do you think of the, the plans for this book? Yeah, uh, I think the WSOP, as always, just did a phenomenal job um, putting out a diverse schedule. You know, like Greg said, there, there's mixed games if that's what you want to try. If, uh, no Limit Hold'em obviously is a plentiful. And then the diverse range of buy-ins is um, pretty incredible. Um, so, But the highlight is I th obviously it's uh, the main event. Uh, that's a pretty cop-out answer. But I think this year with the, with the weight that everyone's had to endure, um, the uh, satellite qualifiers that uh, GG poker will be supporting uh i think we could see some real big numbers at the main event and i've even heard some people talk about breaking the main event record and i'm not about to go that far quite yet but uh i'll see it when i believe it or i'll believe it when i see it interesting um the other two that stand out to me on the schedule this year is the poker hall of fame event maury will we be seeing you in that one uh, well, i don't know if i uh it I doubt I can play in anything that's being filmed, but if it's yeah. not, yes, yes. <laughs> all right. Well, that's not the end of the schedule. And I mean, that's going to be really cool, but having all the uh, some of the game's legends and uh, top players all come together for one uh, TV made-for-TV event. And then, of course, the GG Poker Flip and Go event. Uh, I, can't, I can't not mention that. Uh, I think the buzz is going to be incredible during the flip stages, and uh, I'm glad that – the WSOP was able to maintain a skill element in this game. It's not just a flip. You have to make decisions. Um, although it's not the perfect, or it's not a perfect match of what the online version is, it's very similar. So I look forward to being in the room for, for some of those big flips and uh, the excitement of seeing if you're going to advance or uh, hit the rail. Excellent. <laughs> and, and I'm happy you mentioned that Hall of Fame event. Uh, I, I'm just curious. I know that there is a party, a third party of some sort who stepped in to offer bounties on every single Hall of Famer's head. I'm curious who that was, but that certainly will add another nice, very cool element uh, to that particular event. Uh, guys, our time is limited. It's uh, a relatively short show, so we've got to move on to topic number two. Um, let's talk about the player experience. This is an exceptional year, and obviously for the first time, we're having the WSOP in the fall. What does this mean for people who are coming to Las Vegas who only know it as a summer destination? Um, you know, with either your local or your visitor hat on, what's going to be different this time around? How might, you know, the elephant in the room, how might the pandemic impact the player experience? And what can organizers and the local community do in Las Vegas to reduce the negative impact? Greg, why don't you take it away? I can on you. Well, I think the biggest difference will be I'm I'm not going to risk heat stroke walking from my car to the building, uh, especially if I get stuck in the back of the parking lot. I mean, you know, those 112 degree days and you got that 200 yard walk. It doesn't seem like much, but man, you get inside and you can just feel the heat radiating off of your body um, from from that, you know, two or three minute walk. In, in terms of you know pandemic related stuff, I, I think that's 
just going to depend upon how this stuff goes with the current trends, Delta variant, you know, foreign travel issues. Um, I've already heard stories from people who have tried to do some travel, you know, not necessarily to Vegas, but their their country has travel restrictions that have made it hard for them to leave and return. So that is going to interfere possibly if things don't keep getting better. If things start getting a little worse, we're going to see a big drop off in foreign participation. Interesting. Uh, Isaac, I know that you've worked also on the inside of it, and I've been uh, seeing you for years in that media room as well. What are your views as far as how the player experience may or may not uh, be different this time around the fall? Yeah, it would be a little different. Uh, if, you, Like Greg said, the weather's going to be way nicer. Uh, I, I was a former employee of WSOP and a Las Vegas resident. I can tell you October, November is really not a better time to be in Vegas. Um, so that's great, especially if you're going to get out of the casino every now and then. Um, but that also means bigger crowds. Uh, the rooms are going to go faster. The restaurant reservations are going to go faster. So if you're really thinking about going, I'd, you know, more so than ever, it's, you got to really plan in advance. Um, another thing that is near and dear to my heart is the NFL. Uh, it'll be fun uh, on Sundays, uh, not only with the WSOP going, but a full slate of football games. Um, especially if you're a better, there's really no better city to be in um, with all the casinos have great viewing parties and opportunities to bet, bet uh, NFL. Uh, from, a, from a negative aspect, of course, um, that's been in discussion. Uh, I, I trust that, you know, Caesars and WSOP, they're going to make sure player safety comes first. Um, that they're going to have a set plan in place to, to make sure that everyone, all the rules are being followed. Um, but it, also as a player, a lot of the responsibility will be on you. You know, if you don't feel comfortable with the crowds, go register at 11 p.m. The cage is open 24 um, seven, you know, register online, stuff like that. So uh, there's a lot of things you can do to, to make sure that your, the experience is how you want it to be. I like it. And I like that you also um, mentioned the whole potential for sticker shock. And we're all used to summer prices for hotels. One of the reasons that they have the World Series of Poker in the summer is it's exactly. relatively low season uh, and lower prices. So uh, it's that, I would say not book early, book often, but certainly book early. Yeah. Um, and uh, unfortunately, I, mean, well, I shouldn't say unfortunately. It, it, it depends who you are, but EDC still followed uh, the WSOP, and it, there is an EDC weekend over the WSOP. So if you uh, uh, you better check when that is to make sure uh, if you're going to come that weekend to really get a hotel in advance. Okay, <laughs> uh, Maury. Obviously, you have the locals hat on. You've been a Las Vegas resident for decades. Uh, what are your thoughts on how the experience may be similar or different this time around? Well, if you'd asked me this question a couple of months ago, I would have uh, bet Isaac even money that we'll get the big, we'll get, we'll break the record for the main event. But unfortunately, you know, with the news that's coming out again recently uh, for, for with the with the, ver the Delta variants and all that scary, uh, you know, uh, just just we got mandated to put uh, our masks on again when we were working, and if. If that hadn't been happening, I would say, yes, the weather is a big, big factor and people are going to truly enjoy themselves. Maybe stay a little bit longer. Maybe the guys are coming to play two events will play three because, as Isaac said again, it's the best time to be in Vegas. There's no, no weather-wise, there's nothing that beats Vegas in uh, October and November. And as if you guys remember, not, not that Bill Gregg might remember, because he played at the horseshoe, but when go when you go back uh, twenty years or so, uh, World Series was in April and May, and I remember yep. standing outside. I remember. Trying, yeah, it was cold. Uh, it was it was pleasant and it was cold. Now I don't think that's going to change. I think summer is. Going it wasn't to change. cold, Maury, unless you're from Vegas. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I've lived in like Minnesota and stuff. It, it doesn't get cold in Vegas. Well, it depends what kind of beat you took, right? I mean, if I took a beat, I'm walking. <laughs> you got so hot when you went out; it was it felt cold. But I, I don't think the uh, uh, this is obviously uh, it, a different situation this year, but starting next year, it'll be back in summertime again. Makes the most economic sense. 
It is, it is in everybody's schedule, you know, to take the summer break. Uh, they're coming to Vegas. And, uh, you know, it's a huge challenge for production, believe it or not. Like, we always uh, have to be very careful that our trucks don't overheat. We have uh, swamp coolers going. We actually have – there's been times that when we reach 115, 16 outside for two days in a row. We physically poured water on top of the <laughs> on top of the trucks to keep them cool. So it, it is it is real challenge for us. So production wise, we are looking forward to it. You know, to go outside and truck <laughs> and back without being so hot. So th th that's gonna be that's gonna be the fun part for us. Um, yeah, I mean, um, I'm I'm still hopeful. I'm still hopeful that we hear some good news in a month or so. The number of players in WSOP is going to be directly proportional with how many people are getting vaccinated and what, this, mm -hmm. what, the, what the stories are coming out. But, you know, like if that reaches 60 percent, 65 percent, I can see uh, mandates being lifted and, you know, like we'll be back having fun again. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a pretty solid take to me. You know, obviously this is uh, every single day the uh, things are changing, the news is coming. You know, yeah. we're, we're talking the World Series of Poker is two, a little over two months from now, September 30th. It's supposed to start. Look back two months where we were there, you know, or look back yeah. two months before that. Things are certainly changing uh, quickly. And just uh, again, a shout out to everyone watching on Twitch. If you have comments or questions about that, you want to ask our panelists or just uh, say your piece about uh, how the pandemic may affect attendance at the World Series of Poker, by all means, give us a shout out over there. Uh, gentlemen, we're rounding the turn. We're into topic number three. Um, it's obviously exciting. I know, Isaac, you're going to be leading off on this question. It's exciting to see GG Poker partnering with the WSOP for the second year running now. I'm curious, what's the plan to drive player numbers for the World Series? I mean, I know, obviously, GG has had an explosive rise to the top of poker. So I'm wondering what sort of perhaps fresh initiatives uh, you guys kind of have up your sleeves that are going to sort of drive awareness and, and hopefully attendance as well. Um, and may these initiatives perhaps stretch beyond the main event as far as satellites, something like that. Yeah, uh, well, for for GG Poker and uh, anyone who can play in GG Poker, play at GG Poker, it really starts today um, or yesterday, I should say, with the uh, event one, um, the return, uh, first brace of the event on GG Poker this year uh, started up, and the series runs uh, into September. Uh, so WSOP is already going, and um, but as far as the live portion, uh, as well as the, the live satellites will be starting up uh, this weekend. So uh, no matter what your bankroll is, if you come to GG Poker, you're going to have a chance to play for, for a live seat um, with, with buy-ins varying at different um, different levels. And we'll, we'll be supporting the main event um, as much as we can and sending as many players as possibly can, uh, you know, barring any issues with travel, like, it, it should it should be a pretty good number and it really will make an impact i believe when uh when everyone shows up uh in vegas this fall cool i have to ask a follow-up on that then you know like we're starting off with you isaac because obviously you're on the inside of gg and then we'll get the reactions uh from maury and greg the follow-up is you know a little bit related as well to the previous question is you know, look, you got to have some sort of contingency plans in the event that, you know, the global health situation doesn't necessarily allow for enough international players to come in. You know, is there sort of a plan B or some sort of alternative measurement via which GG will be measuring its success as far as partnership with the WSFP? Yeah, this is certainly an interesting year with our, our partnership dates back to last year, but this is the first year where we're really um, integrated into the live event. Um, but the challenges, some of them are out of our control. So we're not putting too much stock into things we can't control. Um, so we're, we're gonna hope, we're gonna pray that, that there's no issues um, and things can continue to get better on a global health level. Um, but we'll be, we'll be having those satellites available, like I said, starting next week. Uh, you can play confidently, you know, knowing that, you know, if, if there's issues, you know, it'll, it'll get resolved one way or another. Um, 
and uh, we'll be working with players if, if, if issues do arise. Got it. Very cool. Well, Maury, obviously you're on the production side of things and you have to make sure all the logos of all the brands appear in the proper places on the screen. What's uh, your experience, uh, you know, thus far, you know, in the past year working with GG and how is that sort of meant to manifest itself uh, in this coming World Series? No, we, well, we're, we, we're not doing any digital production this year. Uh, because obviously the main uh, main production that's coming is going to be a huge task. Mm -hmm. And uh, looking forward to work with GG. We've done quite a few things already with them. And uh, I, I, can, I have to tell you that that it's a, it's been a very pleasant experience. So um, it's always nice to have uh, a very strong online poker site behind the brick and mortar uh, uh, tournaments because uh, it can only build from there. I mean, who knows? I, I truly believe the sky is the limit uh, with this partnership and uh, looking forward to uh, uh, have a main event that we break the 20,000 records. <laughs> I, let, let's 20, yeah, 20,000? 20, yeah, 20,000. Greg, that's the one that you wouldn't mind finishing like 150th. It's fine. Because you, you'll still probably well, get, uh, you'll still probably get if, like 500, you... 600,000. <laughs> If you want to promise me 150th right now, Maury, I'll take it. But, <laughs> yeah, yes. You so know, the, the, the term the term I use, and it applies to everyone, even like the runner up in the 20 million or the 20,000 player field, and who maybe they just won 10 or 20 million dollars. The, the word is still congratulations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, but seriously, I'm not, I, I mean. I'm not, I'm not putting bets out there, but I think it's a huge favorite. Within five or six years, we see 20,000 main event uh, uh, participants. Yeah. We, I really do because the combination, the combination is the key. You know, like what the online sites can do for the events. And so I can ten, like, ten day ones. Uh, well, <laughs> may, 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 maybe more. Maybe more, maybe maybe much bigger arena. So that's you know, can you imagine shuffle up and deal and uh, four thousand people, five thousand people playing every day? That's kind of cool. And yeah, we'll see what, what where it's going to be held next this, year. There this, may be more room in the ballrooms there. Jack Heffel just needs to make the structure faster, guys. That's all. Yeah. Else is fine. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I don't know if I'd want to make the structure faster, but for other tournaments, not the main event, I'm kind of a big fan of playing to the money on day one. No, you can't say that. Please don't say that. that, that not for the for main us. event. Not doesn't for matter. the main event. Even for the bracelet events, because I'll, I'll tell you just a little tidbit about the production. This is a little different than the shows that we do in our studio or smaller group of uh, pros that we, all, we know them. So many new faces come to WSOP. They need to find out who they are. And if they play down to final table in, in, on Tuesday, and we bring the final table back on Wednesday, at least gives us overnight to get prepared for it. They're, you know, who they are, put their bios yeah. out there. For, so, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm fine. I'm, believe me, I'm big. Uh, uh, <laughs> you have my support for faster structure, but um, uh, well, I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not necessarily saying faster. And the World Series would be an exception to this because people are all there for it. But yeah. all these other tournaments I play around the country all year long, a lot of the players are driving in from one to five hours away. And so playing to the money on day one, I think, is very beneficial for that kind of event. Yeah. Because then you don't have to, like, drive home three, four hours and then drive back on Sunday just to, you know, bubble or – yeah. You know, or I bagged eight blinds and I know I'm going to be all in the first hand I play and I'm not even going to get paid for it if I lose. No. Um, so the World Series is different because, you know, you either live there or you've traveled and you're staying there. You're not driving four hours back and forth during an event. Right. And that sure. certainly relates, as a matter of fact, actually, you know, one of our uh, people who are watching on Twitch, thank you very much. You know, they, they ask if players from overseas aren't able to travel, how does everyone think that will impact the WSOP atmosphere? And what Greg spoke to was very much the difference between like a, a local domestic concern versus the international concern. Obviously, if there are no players coming in internationally, you know, that's, you know, that, that's a, a genuine issue. Whereas, you know, for the people who are traveling and flying in from yeah. far, 
uh, perhaps it resonates a little bit more. Um, as speaking to what Maury had had to say, you know, he says from the production standpoint, I think it's also so important. I'm, I'm glad we've got the three of you from different backgrounds from within poker. Obviously, from the player standpoint, yeah, we want to play down to the money. We're concerned about the structure, but you know, at the end of the day, it's also a spectator sport, and that's exactly what Maury has has done so so well in his team for our industry to to sort of bring everyone in and, and feel a part of it. Um, Isaac, I also want to just get back to you before we you know go back and turn to Greg, um, and just to get like a, a little bit of a clearer picture as far as satelliting players uh, mm -hmm. beyond the main event. Are there plans also to offer packages and, and hopefully boost the numbers in the other 87 events that are going to be running? Uh, right now, we're just doing main event satellites um, at GG Poker. Uh, that could change. Uh, we also may be running, or not running ourselves, but we'll be having promotions uh, at, at the live series, and we'll be ha we'll have a hallway booth there. Um, you'll see us there, and there there may be opportunities for uh, us to support uh, the Flip and Go event. Um, but for this year, um, with all the variables and the first time there, uh, we're putting all of our all of our stock and all of our efforts into the the main event, um, and hope to expand um, as we view this as a as a long term partnership with WSOP. So um, we just hope to keep growing and growing and um, cement that relationship with WSOP. Uh, but this year will be all main event. I like it. Um, so we'll break that record. If right. you're going to add something, if you're going to add an event, my suggestion is actually the seniors. I think that one creates the most passion mm -hmm. and the players who are interested in, you know, there's there's a lot of players who will come out just to play the seniors. Um, 10000 is too much for them. And, and it may be an issue because it's a $1,000 buy-in and is someone going to go out of their way to travel from overseas just for the mm -hmm. seniors event? Mm -hmm. But I just see that as an event where the players are very excited to get into it. Yeah, I, um, I, I agree with you. I mean, I've been to it, every year of the seniors the weekend is, it might be the funnest weekend at the WSMP. <laughs> Right. Plus, a lot of us, you know, we're all uh, getting a little bit older. I'm 39. You know, in 11 years, I'll be eligible to play in the seniors event. I know Daniel McGrath, who had his birthday yesterday, he's just four or five years away as well. So uh, soon, the seniors are gonna. It's gonna seem like old school because you know you have the the young the young uh, the young sharks aren't yet playing in it, but certainly a lot of characters can come up. Um, in that sort of an event, um, Greg, I also just sort of want to get your thoughts. Obviously, you know, you're not playing on GG or, you know, within the United States, but have you heard any sort of vibe of folks, you know, fellow players of yours who you may know outside of the United States as far as, you know, maybe their travel plans, maybe they're thinking, okay, I'll quarantine in Mexico or whatever it is for two weeks and then I can go in, anything like that so that they could, you know, get their online seat, something of that nature, and then make sure they can attend. Do you have any sense of that? I don't have a strong sense of that. I know one friend of mine who is from England and he just played a tournament series in Tallinn in Estonia. Sure. And he was complaining about the hoops he had to jump through to get home. Hmm. So it was like leaving the UK, no real issue. But then the UK had all these prohibitions on when you enter the UK from outside. So he had to like take a test and test negative for COVID and then wait so many days and then take a second test. And then he's allowed to board the plane that's gonna fly him to the UK. Mm -hmm. So he was just like, this was such a pain. And now I had like a bad session. I didn't do well in the tournaments and now I have to just sit and deal with this crap. <laughs> um, you know, so it was, he was just like, I don't think I wanna travel again anytime soon. I don't know how other countries are. If I was coming from other European countries or South America or Australia, I don't know what their hoops are that they have to jump through to come to the US or to go home at the end of it. But I can imagine that having a big impact if it's not easy to do. Right. Cert certainly, you're like no other in that way. I know myself speaking, you know, from here in Israel, I'm an American citizen, so I can still come and go. But as you said, a little bit more of a, of a barrier to entry, uh, unlike other years. As yeah. Far as testing well, he's, like he's a British citizen. 
it had nothing to do with his citizenship status. It was just if you're coming into the UK from any non UK destination, you know, or departure point, then you had to jump through all these hoops before they allowed you into the country. Right. And and so it, it had nothing to do with him going to Estonia. Right. It was I think it was if he went anywhere else in the world. You know, maybe not Ireland or something. I don't know if they had like a grouping slightly broader than just the UK. But if you came from outside that that ring, then you had to jump through all these hoops in order to be allowed in. Sure. I I, I don't know how they're handling things too, like the channel. Like if you're just the guy driving through the channel, like transporting goods. I mean, how do they handle that right now? I don't know, but I'm sure there's all the, these difficulties that are going to motivate some of the players to stay home rather than come to the World Series of Poker. Right. Well, it is obviously a World Series of Poker. I know, obviously, you, Moore and you, Greg, were very instrumental in making sure it is the world and not just you know, the United States yeah. became a gigantic popular game. And, you know, wherever you are in the world, it's uh, like, like, like we said before, you're like no other in terms of how it's going to end up happening that you get, but uh, if, get your if the non-Americans stay home, my odds of winning a bracelet go up. <laughs> and and so. you heard it here first on the board as well. Uh, guys, we want to turn to our final topic, sort of our lightning round as we end off the show. Let's try to end it off a little bit more on a, on a lighter note. All of you are grizzled WSOP veterans. I'm wondering if you could perhaps regale us with your favorite WSOP-related story. Maury, why don't you start us off? Um, uh, I'm, I have so many. I, I really do. But when, when I read the topic, I said, oh, the, all the experience that I had, you know, being in the WSOP with Sam Grizzle, uh, you know, <laughs> as, as we know, he passed away, unfortunately, last year. And uh, just him picking on the tourists, uh, picking on recreational players, his way. But one of my favorite stories is with Henry Ornstein. And oh, Humberto, sure. Yeah, Humberto Bernays. Henry, uh, uh, you guys don't know, maybe you do, but Henry actually won yeah. the Seven Card Star Championship. So um, it, uh, it, in one of the tables, I played that event with him, and he got to the final table, and I remember Humberto coming to uh, Henry on the break and saying, uh, Henry, Henry, you blow me, you blow me. And Henry was, uh, what is he saying? He was trying to say, you bluff me. <laughs> you bluff me. <laughs> just the way he was saying. And for years, Henry would go and tell me, yeah, Humberto, every time he saw Humberto, 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 I'm going to blow you. <laughs> so, that, was, that was something between him and uh, Humberto. That I, I, you know, it, it just, it is not just the game. I mean, it is really a special place to be. Henry's 96 years old, by the way. Mm -hmm. He called me just two days ago and making me promise to go visit him in New Jersey. But when he won the World Series, I mean, he was in his 80s. You know, he was, uh, it, it's, it's really uh, like, it tells you about the event. It tells you about the sports that you're in. Uh, there is, you can play it until you're 96 years old. I mean, yeah. I, know, I know one guy that's doing it and he's still playing it. He's played twice a week, plays uh so, Greg, uh, Isaac, that's what we're looking forward to, guys, in our retirement. Just let's, let's get there. <laughs> Wonderful. Of course, Henry yeah. Ornstein, the uh, inventor of the whole card camera. Uh, right. I believe even just a few years ago, he finished a final table, like the 10K stud championship event as well. That's right. That's right. He, uh, he actually made the final table a main event. Correct. Yes. Unbelievable. One, one, one year. Correct. Yeah. Unbelievable. Well, Greg, obviously, I imagine your best memory of the World Series was when you're holding up $5 million. But uh, perhaps you have a yes. special story to share with us. Well, that's certainly my best or favorite memory, but I'll, I'll tell you one of my funniest memories. So it's the, the first World Series at the Rio in 2005. I uh, have been playing cash games. It's pretty late, like 3 a.m. And there's that long hallway from the Amazon room down to where you go outside to the parking lot. And I'm walking down that hallway with a friend of mine from back in Connecticut where I used to live and we're chatting. And as you walk down that hallway, you can see in front of you, it goes left outside and right is, you'll turn right if you wanna take the pathway back up to the casino. Right, the rotunda, right. And, 
and and this lady comes around that corner from the casino side and she's stumbling drunk you know very inebriated and as she gets close enough she looks up and recognizes me because it you know as maury knows it was on tv non-stop back then on espn the reruns were just 20 times a week and then she's just like you know oh my god fossil man oh you know and and she comes up and and then she's like hanging on me and she wants a picture she takes her cell phone and she shows it in my friend's hand and she's like take our picture and she's sitting there holding on to my side and my friend is like i can't even get this phone to turn on and she's like oh it, maybe it doesn't work my friends threw me in the pool earlier <laughs> And he looks at me and is like, what do you want me to do? And I'm like, well, try to try to get it working so she can get the picture she wants. And then she, like I said, she's kind of hanging on my side. She looks up at my face and she's like, oh, you're so sweet. Can I lick you? <laughs> and I'm sure I misheard her. Like, she didn't say that. You know, like I misheard her. I mishear people a lot. I don't have the best hearing. I'm like, what would what? I'm trying to figure out what she really said. And then she like gets up on her toes and just goes oh right up the side of my face. <laughs> and then she like was like, oh well, thanks for trying. Grabs her phone and stumbles up the hallway. Oh, wow. That is one and heck of I'm, a story. <laughs> and, and that was I'm that, telling that was this. That was cut in camera? <laughs> just like No, like no, there's no cameras. Uh, on, you know, it was out in the hallway at 3 a.m. But I'm telling people this story, and my wife hates the story. And then all of a sudden I start seeing this lady all the time because she had been out there on, like, vacation. And she was like a school teacher off for the summer. She was having so much fun, she decided she wanted to stay in Vegas all summer. So she got a job as a chip runner for the cash games there at the at the Rio. And so now I would see her on a regular basis in the Amazon room. And at one point, I'm playing in a cash game. My wife is there with me. And she comes walking up, the licking girl, as I call her. And she, like goes to my wife to apologize and like i'm so sorry i was so drunk and even though my wife hates this story she immediately says to the ladies like ah eh, what do i care lick him again if you want <laughs> excellent stuff oh my goodness well um isaac you know those are two tough stories to kind of follow up on but we yeah. do have position and that is the best uh, you know the best thing to have uh, at the table so perhaps you've got an interesting story to share with us uh, as we sail out well i certainly have never had anyone lick me at the world series of poker and <laughs> let's hope that i can continue I, I wish that. I hadn't. yeah let's you see a lot of things in vegas certainly but uh that i haven't heard of um for me uh, one of the more memorable uh, times for me personally, uh, I think it was 2019, so it seems so long ago, but it, that is the last WSOP. Um, we had James Holzhauer, the Jeopardy's champ, come, come to the WSOP, and he, he played the tag team event with uh, the great Mike Sexton. Um, we did a presser in the morning with those two, and it was uh, for charity. They were playing for charity, uh, but James, yeah, he, he was... He was very nervous. You could tell he was nervous, but he got out there and uh, he built up a stack early with the help of Mike. And uh, it was just fun watching them uh, play in the Brasilia room. Uh, I was helping the media, local media was really on top of the story. I was helping them get their shots and um, making sure no one, <laughs> no, making sure it wasn't too much of a media circus because he, he drew a big crowd. Um, but on breaks, I was able to talk to James and Mike um, uh, and it was just an incredible time uh, as, a, as a big fan of Jeopardy and a big fan of James. It was pretty cool for me to uh, be there for, for them. And unfortunately, I don't think they made it past day one, but it, I know they both had a great time.
I love it. Uh, man, I, you know, I, it is one thing. Look, I actually had one little story as well, but it also is about Mike Sexton. So I, I feel like compelled to tell it at this yes, point. Yes, please do. It, it happened um, five years ago. This is the 2016 WSOP. It's the first time I ever attended. I was 34 years old. I had been wanting to go uh, for quite a while. It's obviously 7,500 miles away from where I am here in Israel. Uh, so it was a very special occasion. And long, long, long ago, um, my father had promised me that for my 21st birthday, he'll take me to Las Vegas. So that did not happen because we were here in Israel, but I was very fortunate that my dad was able to come with me that year, the first time that I went to the World Series. Um, and I had had an arrangement through uh, Mike's um, first wife, I believe, Anne. Uh, she had helped us arrange some sort of an interview. And even at the time, as involved as I may have been in poker media, I did not yet know just how amazing or how, how high profile prestigious a mic was. And I didn't realize that at the time I was literally in the presence of greatness. And it was just really cool. Nothing specific, but the fact is, you know, me with my little, I did it via a mobile phone interviewing the great Mike Sexton, and my dad was right there watching me do it. And I, I just thought that was pretty cool, and that happened right in the media room of the World Series. So certainly, um, you know, we, we will miss Mike. He's one thing that we'll be missing at this year's WSOP. But, um, you know, all you guys, you know, told us exactly that we can expect a really good installment this year, and we're certainly all eager to see each other again. Um, that is all the time that we have for today. I hope everyone watching has enjoyed episode number 12 of The Orbit. Thanks again so much to our panelists, Maury Escandani, Greg Raymer, and Isaac Hansen for joining us. Everyone would like to get your feedback, so please be sure to use hashtag The Orbit when sharing or leaving us a comment on Facebook, Twitter, and all your other social media outlets. And finally, this episode will remain available on demand on twitch.tv slash poker. I'm Robbie Spazinski, and I'll see you again next time on The Orbit.